Hello, I'm Michael Weitzel, the Army Contracting Command Command Historian, where I've been down here at Rock Redstone Arsenal for the last eight years. But prior to that, I was a Deputy Historian at Army Sustainment Command at Rock Island, where I truly learned to not only appreciate but love the deep history of the Quad Cities and Rock Island Arsenal itself, as well as the history of contracting in the Army. June 14, 1775, the Continental Congress authorized an infantry that became the United States Army. The next day, they authorized an appropriation to fund and sustain and supply that infantry force. That makes contracting the second oldest mission in the U.S. Army. Fort Armstrong was constructed in 1816 as part of the War of 1812. Later on, that construction and the Army owning the island was challenged by the railroad. That challenge was defeated and the Army's ownership of the island was ascertained going back to an appropriations bill at the turn of the 19th century. Once again, Army contracting stepping in. We've switched and changed how we've done contracting through the history of the Army. From eight, the War of 1812 through 1832, the Army decided that the combatant commanders could handle contracting on their own and didn't need the assistance of trained contracting professionals. In 1832, the Black Hawk War was staged primarily out of Fort Armstrong and Rock Island Arsenal. Those commanders contracted for supplies to be delivered to the troops on campaign. And those contractors bringing food, boots, horses, ammunition, delivered it to Fort Armstrong, looked across the Mississippi River and decided that's a combat zone and we're not risking our lives. We've already been paid. We'll leave the supplies right here. The troops on campaign went hungry, walked out of their boots until they just fell apart off their feet, and even lost horses and were forced to walk, not just back to Fort Armstrong, but when the war ended, like Abraham Lincoln, all the way home. When our construction on the arsenal began in 1868, the contract was let with a local quarry to provide the stone for the workshops you work in today, as well as the houses that were initially built on Rock Island. Shortly after that, the Great Fire of Chicago caused the price of stone to skyrocket, and the quarry, instead of delivering the contracted stone to the arsenal, started shipping it to Chicago, where they could get 10 times as much money. At one point, contracting officers went to the quarry, demanding the Army's stone at gunpoint with their service pistols. Eventually, after years, and literally three years, of issues with these contractors, the contract was canceled and a new contract was found with a quarry out of Iowa that could match the quality and the color of the stone to complete construction of the arsenal. Fast forwarding to World War II, Rock Island not only was a center of Army contracting, it was also the home for the Army's tank program. And as we reached out to American industry to start building supplies and getting the assembly lines ready for World War II, experts from Ford, GM, Chevy, all came down to Rock Island to learn how to build tanks. And then the contracts were signed and what became the arsenal of democracy started as M3s and M4 tanks started rolling off the assembly lines nonstop until World War II ended. In 1985, the Corps of Engineers started up a new contracting program called LogCap. In 1996, Army Material Command took over that program and today LogCap provides housing, life support, sustainment to troops not only in combat zones but for exercises, remote bases, and camps around the world. In the early 2000s when Operation Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom began, there were issues and problems with contracting. Contracting officers fell underneath the command and the rating chain of the units they supported. They didn't have a lot of supervision, there wasn't a expertise of overwatch, and there were issues of fraud. And these few issues hit the papers around the world. Enough to the point where Congress started a commission to see how we could fix Army and expeditionary contracting. In October 2008, I'm sorry, 2007, the commission released its report, commonly referred to as the Gansler Commission Report, which gave the blueprints for starting a new two-star command within the Army with two subordinate one-star commands, six subordinate contracting centers to centralize Army contracting and provide that oversight as well as the expertise and build knowledge that could be passed on. 
In October of 2008, that command stood up. At Rock Island, contracting personnel from Army Sustainment Command, Joint Munitions Command, and even Tank and Automotive Command were suddenly found themselves working for Army Contracting Command and became what is now the Army Contracting Command, Rock Island. Since that time, your center has obligated almost $120 billion supporting the U.S. Army and our allies around the world with over 125,000 actions processed through your center. That's not a lot of actions, that's a lot of history being made every day at Rock Island.